There are two main ideas that Plan 9 is based on, and everything falls out from that. I did a video on everything as a file, so watch that first. And the next idea is per process namespaces. Since everything is a file, and those files are in a hierarchy of directories, that grouping of files and directories is a namespace. In Unix systems, everyone is everyone using that system, you know, shared a single namespace. If you wanted your own to modify as you pleased, you needed your own system. And that led to everybody wanting private Unix workstations on their desk, which led to other problems. Uh, the Plan 9 solution to this was to give every process its uh, own private namespace. So every process can build a hierarchy of files um, and can change it however it pleases. Um, this solves a lot of problems that crop up in flex flexible uh, operating systems. One sort of easy example for regular users um, would be adding software. In most operating systems, there's a convention for a globally accessible you know, software repository, um, and that would be somewhere in the namespace, something like a bin directory or an applications folder. Uh, but in multi-user systems, uh, you need permissions to make sure that people just don't go modifying or adding software or wherever. Um, one solution was to add something like the path environmental variable and let users modify that. Uh, but Plan 9 deals with this by letting users modify their own namespace. So, oops. In your, every user's home directory will be their own bin directory and they can put their own files in there. Um, and then what the system does is it's going to uh, let users do a bind, which is like a union mount of their bin directory over the global one. Uh, the effect is, is that when I go and look in the bin directory, um, there it is, I find my awesome app. So I don't have to put, you know, preface it with, you know, the path to my home directory. I can just run my little program that's in, you know, my own user's directory. It just gets mapped onto the global one and I don't need to deal with, you know, environmental variables for path. I don't have to worry if any other program can read those variables or anything like that. Everything just shows up in bin. So another way this comes up is running, you know, heterogeneous grid, which is a network of computers all using different CPU architectures, but reading from a central file server. So the main system I'm sitting at here is, um, oops, is running a uh, AMD 64 processor, um, a 64-bit, you know, Intel x86 instruction set. So if I run some program here, it's going to be reading AMD 64 compiled code. But if I take this other window here, and I connect to a Wi-Fi router that's running a, oops, RCPU host. That's running a 32-bit uh, MIPS processor. It'll connect to it. I can go ahead and run Rio. So now I'm running a program and it's running on the MIPS machine. I can run stats. And it goes ahead and just runs it. Um, if I open another window, and I use this one to connect to a Raspberry Pi, which would be running a 64-bit ARM processor. So it'll connect to it. I can also run Rio. I can run stats. And there it is. So every system sees its own single bin directory. Here's a bunch of programs. They're all compiled for AMD 64. Over here, I see the same programs. These ones all happen to be compiled for the Lindian 32-bit MIPS. And same thing over on the Pi. If I look in bin, it also sees a bunch of programs that are also 
just happened to be compiled for ARM64. So what's happening now, if I type NS to see the namespace here, is what the system's doing is the actual bin directory is just empty. Every system figures out what architecture you're running on, puts the binaries for that architecture in the bin. So over here on the on the MIP system, since it's the lending, it'll say spim. So bin has spim bin in it. And over here on the ARM64, same thing. It's putting in the ARM64 binaries into bin. So that means I don't have to like always preface my programs with like AMD64 slash stats, spim slash stats, ARM64 slash stats. Even though I'm crossing from one architecture to another and then to another, they all behave as sort of one big unified system. And this works well with the hardware too. So again, the hardware will also just look like files. And if you can change what files are in your namespace, you can change what hardware is in your namespace. So coming from a Unix background, this will be nice because you don't have to worry about mounting or unmounting devices and what effects that might have on some other process that's running. But because of everything built up to this point, everything being a file, all files access the same way and transparently over a network, I can do something like this, where I have this Raspberry Pi here. So what's going on is it's, this, pi, this Raspberry Pi is just sitting on a table with just power and ethernet. It has no mouse, no keyboard, no monitor plugged into it. The mouse and the keyboard from this um, AMD64 machine are being sent over to basically the Pi and it's reading and writing those files there. And the, out, the graphics output's also being sent back by being that data being written to a file. Um, but I have a third computer that also has a, um, an audio device hooked to it. It has speakers plugged in because the Pi doesn't. So I can import from that computer, which is just called sound, the audio device, put it in the namespace of this process, this window here. So now this window also includes a file for the audio device. So if I look into dev, I got all my audio controls, which means I can run Doom here. And this Doom will be pulled from the file system. I don't have to specify that I'm running the ARM Doom. I just say I'm running games Doom. And when it does, I get sound output. So this sound is coming from a third computer now. <clears throat> So, yep. So this means you can modify whatever hardware is like in a particular window. And again, this is per process. This only applies to this window I'm running in here. So I'll go ahead and shut it off. If I open up another window, it does not have that audio device in it. Because I did not add it to this one. So if I run Doom here, it will just play silently because it has no access to any audio hardware. So putting this all together means that you no longer have to think of each you know, little computer here as a self-contained unit. Um, instead of thinking of what a particular machine can do, you can think of terms of what hardware is available across the whole network how that can be assembled into a namespace, and then you think of what a particular process can do with that namespace. So in the modern world where you know, many of us technically have several computers in our homes, uh, it means everything can work together seamlessly rather than a web browser to configure a Wi-Fi router and a proprietary phone app to control the light bulbs and a third-party cloud provider to get files from my laptop to my phone. You know, everything can speak the same language, all talk to each other, all the distinctions between who has hardware in what location do, is meaningless. Everything can just be, you know, shared over the network, you know. Um, I hope this is, uh, this is informative and gives everyone a new way of thinking about how computers can be used. 
Uh, and as always, have fun.